Hello everyone and in this video we are going to take a look at how to control Vellum using attributes. Okay, So primarily we are going to recreate this specific effect. So what we are doing essentially is we are controlling the pressure using custom attributes. So that's what the whole lesson is going to be about. So to get started, it's this isn't a very complicated thing. Okay, so I'm just going to take a geometry folder and we'll create a font. Okay. And I'll just call it S. And then I will make it I'll do a transform and I'll just rotate it to the ground. And also make it bigger. So about, I think that big should be fine. Yeah, so just scale it up by like a uniform scale of 10. Okay, so we want to do a couple of things. Like firstly, I want to scatter some points inside, but I don't want them to intersect with the with the boundaries so what i'll do is i'll take a poly extrude and let's do an inset in the positive so this is this is what we will extrude okay and just turn off the sides so you just have like the outer boundary okay and so this will be my my collision object Okay, so I'm going to take another poly extrude and I'll just extrude this and give it a back. Okay, so this is essentially what we want. Okay, now let's also scatter some points on the inside. So what's going to happen is like, you know, you'll get this gap. Okay, that's why I sort of did like the the negative inset so it sort of expands outwards okay but we don't want these many points this is like far too many so we'll just take about 50 and i can randomize it a little bit okay so this is good um no maybe yeah just expand it a little so it fills it up sort of uniformly Okay, now what we want to do is we just want to copy a sphere on this. So we'll take a sphere and this should be above zero. So I'm going to do right click, copy parameter, paste relative reference. So that will put it on top. Okay. And then uh, just scale it down. So I think about that should be okay. And keep it to polygon and keep it to about four, uh, a frequency of four. And I can do a copy to points. And so this becomes my, you know, base geometry. Okay, now the other thing I want to do, and this I'll just do a null here. And I'm going to call it out collide. Okay, wrong spelling. Yeah. Okay, now what we also want to do is we want to add some attributes to this, which we can then use to control uh, the pressure value on our vellum simulation. Okay, so how we're going to do that is I'm going to just take an attribute noise. So we'll just type in noise. And this will be a 1D attribute. And the attribute is called amount. Okay, and so we'll just plug this in over here. And I'm going to do a remap noise. So we'll keep it like say zero to one for now. And I'll hit animated. Okay. Now, if you want to see this, press the eye and then click on amount. And now if I press play, you should be able to see it, you know, animate. So what I want to do also is I want to lower the roughness a little bit. Yeah. And maybe adjust the size. Yeah, okay, so this is fine. Okay, so we have our basic setup done. Now let's just set up the set up the basic vellum. Okay, 
So I'm just going to type in balloon. So you'll get vellum configure balloon. So what that does is it gives you like a vellum cloth and a pressure. And just plug this in. So you'll get like your basic setup. And then we also want the collide. So I'm going to take a vellum solver. And we'll plug in one and two and then we'll plug in the collide. Yeah, so if I press play, let's see what happens. Yeah, so we just have like these guys kind of, you know, squashing and then coming up. Okay, now if you just want to animate them expanding, like without attributes, what you can do is you can just come into the vellum solver and then just type in vellum and you'll find something called vellum constraint property. Okay, so plug it into the force output. And what you want to do is you want to only affect the pressure. So switch on the group and type in at type is equal to pressure. Okay. And then what we want is we just want to animate the rest length scale. So turn it on. And then I'm going to turn off the, uh, the simulation for a moment. Let's say I'll come to about 24. I'll do alt click. Okay, and then we'll come to about say 96. And I'll make it about 50. Okay. And let's see what happens. So I'll come up here, or actually we can see it in here itself. So I'll just press W and press play. So ahead of 24, it should start to expand. Okay, so what we'll do is, uh, I'm just going to lower the, uh... okay, so if you just want to animate, you know, the spheres inflating, okay, over time, what I can do is I can come into the vellum solver and take a vellum constraint property. We only want to affect the pressure. So just click here and take at type is equal to pressure and we want to animate the rest length scale. So it's sort of like it multiplies with the rest length. So the idea is like the rest length uh, sort of decides the distance between each point. So if that distance increases, the sphere will basically expand. Okay. And what we'll do is I'm going to turn off the simulation for a moment. I'll come to 24. Okay, I'll do alt click on this value. I'll come to 48 and I'll make it about 200. Okay, so it should expand like a fair bit. Okay, and then let's press play. And what should happen is you'll mostly just see it sort of, you know, expand once it gets to that value. Okay, not, uh, doesn't seem to be enough. Yeah, you're seeing something. So let's try to increase this. Let's make it about uh, 300. You just need to sort of, you know, work out the values. Yeah, there you go. So 300 seems to be a good number. And then if you wanted to go back, I can again press Alt here and then I'll just temporarily turn it off and go back again to one. And what that should do is you'll get like an expansion and then a contraction. Yeah. And then there you go. So if we sort of check it up here, 
so you'll get like that okay let me just turn on real time see so it'll expand and then it'll contract again so this is fine so this is just sort of like you know manually animating it so how do you control it with uh, with an attribute okay so what we can do is i'm going to delete this and we're going to turn on vex expression so it's about three lines of code so it's a little bit what we're doing is uh, vellum constraints are essentially primitive constraints but our amount value is on uh, is not on primitives it's on points so what what we're going to do is we're going to use a function to bring or to actually read uh, one specific point on a primitive so a primitive has like our polygon has four points so we're essentially going to read one point from that and find you know whatever value is there and then use that to affect the rest length okay so the first thing we want to do is we want to bring in uh, our input okay so if we come in here and we say input 3 is uh, we're going to bring in a sop and yeah this this guy right so let's just give it a name so i'll call it i'll give it a null and i'm going to call it uh, let's call it amount yeah so let's come back in here and i'll click there and i'll pick up amount okay so this is fine so this is input number three which is like zero one and two so this will be like when you when we have to call it in we'll type in two okay Okay, so come down to vex expression. The first thing we want to do is we will create an integer value called pt. And this is important. So this is the one that's going to let me pick up like a particular point value from uh, my primitive. Okay, so I'm going to do something called prim points. And you know, like the first input, okay, which is zero. And we want to say at primitive number and then you do a square bracket and specify which point. So it's actually it should be like four points or three points depending on your face as a quad or a triangle. So it's zero, one and two. Okay, so we just want to pick up, you know, whatever is zero from there and then semicolon. Okay, so this will, this will... Uh, this integer called pt is now storing you know that particular value okay and then i want to create a float value called amount which is going to be a point function and what it wants is it's you're firstly specifying which input the point is coming from okay and then uh, we want to give it a name so we'll call it amount Or actually, no, we're not giving it a name. We're, we're essentially just checking, you know, what attribute is on it. So our attribute is called amount. Okay. And then uh, we want to pick up PT. Okay. So, you know, that should, you know, so now we are storing like the amount value over here. Okay. And then lastly, I want to set it to the rest length scale. So the rest length scale is called rest scale. So I'll just say, rest scale is equal to amount and that's basically it so if i've done everything right it should work except that my amount over here is too low okay like we remapped it but it's only from zero to one which is not going to do anything so what we'll do is we'll start at 50 and we'll end at say 350 okay so that should give me a fairly big range and if you've done everything right, let's just play this and see. And there you go. Okay, so the reason why it's not working is actually pretty simple is because I made a mistake. Okay, is that uh, these are still points and they need to sort of match. So this, the values have to be on the spheres. Okay. 
So which is, I need to take another copy to points because the geometry count needs to match, right? Like a geometry count is not matching. Okay, so what you do is you take the sphere and you plug it in and then this comes in here. And so it should transfer the amount values to the point attributes, okay? And then this feeds in here. Okay, so remember that, so that was a mistake, okay? Which is, uh, you should have like this input and this input, they have to match, okay? Like point wise. And so now if I check my vellum solver, let's see what happens and there you go. Okay, so now it works. So as the noise value animates, it kind of goes between, you know, inflating and deflating. And then you can try to increase the number of points. So I can try to take a scatter and then make it, let's try a hundred points, which might be a bit too much to calculate, but let's see. There you go. Yeah, so there it is. And then if you like, we've taken a noise amount. And so we've taken like an attribute noise, but then if you want to have like a gradient and have it, you know, uh, inflate linearly, you can do that. Like you can do anything, like whatever, you can do mask from geometry and control it that way and then multiply it with noise. So all of those other things, you know, those are pretty straightforward. Okay, so you just need to remember, you know, the code because that is the important bit. Anyways, the file will be available. So you can actually just, you know, copy paste the code from here if you don't want to remember it. That's also perfectly fine. But yeah, this is essentially how you can, uh, and this is not just for pressure. You can use it for anything. Like in any case, if you want to control uh, any kind of vellum properties based on attributes, then you can just, you know, you can use the same function. So just, yeah, the only thing you need to remember is like both these inputs should have the same, you know, you want to copy the sphere onto both the inputs. Otherwise it, it's not going to work. Okay. Yeah, so that's basically it. So this is how you can control uh, Vellum using custom attributes, okay, or animated attributes. So as usual, if you have any questions regarding this tutorial or uh, any other tutorial, you can uh, write to me on email or Twitter or Instagram, you know, whatever is preferable to you or in the comment section. And I'll try my best to answer.